This at least had come to be my position about all that was called optimism, pessimism and improvement. Before any cosmic act of reform, we must have a cosmic oath of allegiance. A man must be interested in life, then he could be disinterested in his views of it. My son, give me thy heart. The heart must be fixed on the right thing. The moment we have a fixed heart, we have a free hand. I must pause to anticipate an obvious criticism. It will be said that a rational person accepts the world as a mixture of good and evil, with decent satisfaction and decent endurance. But this is exactly the attitude which I maintain to be defective. It is, I know, very common in this age. It was perfectly put in those quiet lines of Matthew Arnold, which are more piercingly blasphemous than the shrieks of Schopenhauer. Enough we live, and if a life, with large results so little rife, and though bearable seem hardly worth this pomp of worlds, this pain of birth. I know this feeling fills our epoch, and I think it freezes our epoch. For our titanic purposes of faith and revolution, what we need is not the cold acceptance of the world as a compromise, but some way in which we can heartily hate and heartily love it. We do not want joy and anger to neutralise each other and produce a surly contentment. We want a fiercer delight and a fiercer discontent. We have to feel the universe at once as an ogre's castle to be stormed, and yet as our own cottage to which we can return at evening.